All right, so what's your name? My name's Tammy. Tammy, how old are you? I think I'm 56. Are you originally from Arizona? Yes, Arizona. Yeah, for the most part, yes. What's your situation right now? Are you homeless? I am homeless, yeah. Just want me to keep talking? <laughs> how long have you been out here? I've been uh, here in this town, uh, probably three, four months in this town. And I came from Tucson, where I've been homeless probably two years, three maybe. So what brings you all the way out here to Phoenix? Oh, um, I was doing six months in the county jail in uh, Pima County, and I found out my mother had had a stroke, and she was paralyzed, and the nursing home was not taking care of her because she had bed sores. So I was going here to be with her to make sure that nursing home's doing their what they're supposed to do to take care of her. And uh, when I got here, there was an incident. I thought I was going to stay at her apartment, but um, her guy she was with, her boyfriend, whatever, 15 years, was more interested in getting in my pants than uh, than what it took to take care of my mother. So, yeah, so that he made it impossible for me to be there at that apartment. So it was either sleep with him or be on the streets. So I'm on the streets. Yeah. So what are you doing now to survive out here? Um, just trying to stay warm at night, really. Um, trying to keep everybody from stealing your blankets and stuff while you're out walking around. And uh, being fed isn't too much of a problem. People come around and give you food all the time. But there are a few days in there where either they forget or we get dropped between the track, dropped you know between the cracks. And there's a couple hungry days, but as far as food goes, it's not too bad out here. You don't have to go steal too much. No. How do you make your money? Uh, that's hard. Any way possible. If you want to prostitute, then it's easy. But um, at this age, I'm not. You know. So yeah. you've done dates before? Oh yes. Uh, how dangerous is it? doing that type of work oh it's da I, I consider it dangerous that's why I don't do it so I watch too much TV and it's scary and plus at this age it's kind of uh, I don't know it's kind of disrespectful I think it for my age to be doing that it's for, that's for the younger girls you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah what's one of the worst experiences you've had being out here homeless on the streets Oh, that, that would be the first night I was here because I wasn't expecting to be on the streets. I was expecting to be picked up by somebody from my mother's apartment and taken into the apartment. But um, I guess I didn't plan ahead and I just showed up and he drinks and he, so he didn't pick me up. First of all, it took me four hours just to get somebody to use the phone. I mean, people would, uh, they just like walk past you like it was the rudest thing. I was like distraught. I was obviously in distress. I mean, I was in tears and nobody will even make a call for you. I mean, understand they don't want you to steal their phone, but you can't even make a call for me. You know, it, it was crazy. It was, it was bad. I was a little scared because it was nighttime. I was freezing cold. I wasn't prepared. I wasn't planned. I had no blanket. I had no nothing. I didn't know anybody. It was scary. So. So you were out there on the streets? I was right here on this corner, yep. And uh, yeah, totally alone and lost and yeah. Luckily this younger girl and, and her boyfriend took me in and said, here is a blanket, you can sit by us. And uh, yeah, so, so that was nice. Are you out here on any substances, any blues, any G? Um, I'm gonna plead the fifth on that one because you're going on social media. Okay, <laughs> yeah. that's fine. Okay. Uh, you said you got out of homelessness, right? Or or you got into a program? I got into a program, yeah. Um, some people came along um, and made a lot of promises and made everything look like, oh, it's, you don't have to do anything and it's gonna, you don't have to quit doing anything, you know. And I knew it was too good to believe, but I just went by what they said and it got us into a house and off the streets. But when I got there, I found out the real rules and there were, there are some things you have to do, and which is really just go to classes. What kind of rules do they have at those places? It's really, the one I'm at is pretty, nice because it's you have to be sober you have to or at least or at least trying to get there and uh, uh, you have to go to classes counseling a counseling class um, it started off as five times a week and I said that was too much and I dropped out but they got it back to they backed it off to three times a week two hours a day two or three hours so that's doable in order to have all your bills paid you know, and not have to worry about your rent what and where, where you're going they're just like counseling classes. Really, they're just so that people can get to know you because the silver bell, the silver ring, the brass ring or whatever at the end of the tunnel is that if you get through this program and they see that you're stable enough, 
and have your shit together enough to be able to take care of yourself that they will get you an apartment for a year yeah. and pay the bills for a year and then after that you take it on yourself so really they're just trying to get to know you to know where you're stable at if you're stable or you know they have to be able to get to know you to know when you're stable so before it's, you it's were just kind of a counseling class Tucson, mm -hmm. what kind of life did you lead did you have a job i had a husband and uh he um he had an income and we weren't since we weren't legally married when he died unexpectedly i mean I, we he was sick and we knew he was gonna die he had he had stomach cancer and we knew he was gonna die but i didn't think he was gonna die that day you know i don't know what but yeah he went to the hospital and didn't come home so that left me since we weren't legally married that left me with nothing no benefits no nothing so do you have any kids yeah we have four kids where are they at they're here well um two of them are in Wait, one's in Tucson right now. Two are in Tucson. The other two are out here. And do they know about your situation? No. Um, no. Well, the one daughter knows that I'm here, but I haven't been able to, since she doesn't have a phone, I haven't been able to reach her. But no, no. Unless I'm doing good, they don't, I don't keep contact with them. Like yeah. the ones, one side of my kids, half of my kids shut me out because of my situation and the other half are, are accepting and, you know, but, yeah. They just kind of accept it? The well, they, you know, they, they don't, sh they love me, you know, what do you call it, unconditionally, you know, they don't. That's good. Yeah. Are you planning on going back to Tucson? Um, at this point, I don't know. I'm seeing what, I'm trying to see what, since I'm already here, I mean, there, I, I'd been there for quite a while, and there was really not, as far as my life getting better there, I mean, I like it there, I have friends there, I love them, I miss my family, and I'm homesick, but as far as getting my life in order, or getting it getting any better for the good, it wasn't going, it was going nowhere there, and I gave it about a year or two, so I'm going to see what this, if maybe this town, maybe I can step up, maybe, or I'm going to try to see what this town offers, yeah. See if there's anything here that can maybe get me up off my, on my feet. Is the homeless population bigger in Tucson or here in Phoenix? I don't know which one's bigger. Um, Phoenix is definitely more out there, like out there. Like when I saw people sitting just right there on the street or at the bus stop, just smoking blues and just, I mean, not even scared. They, like, nobody looking for cops or you know even yeah. seeming to care. That freaked me out a little bit. <laughs> that took some getting used to, but. But they don't do that there in Tucson, you know, so. Yeah, it's kind of becoming normalized out yeah, there. Yeah, so here I don't, I don't know. It's not, um, I don't know about bigger. There's a lot of homeless people in Tucson, but it's more behind the scenes. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah, I noticed that, like, they come out at night. Yeah, they yeah. By the tunnels, right? Yes, yeah, or right off, tunnels. yeah, off the street, yeah. All right, well, thank you for sharing your story. I really do appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Are you okay with me putting this on my YouTube channel? Yeah. And just in case somebody wants to reach out to you with any sort of help or donations, do you have any contact information that you want to share, like an email? Oh, I wish I did. App, <laughs> uh, Facebook or anything. Like I that. wish I did. I really don't, though. That sucks. But but no, right now I don't. I didn't bring my phone today or anything. So. Have you got an Obama phone? I do, phone? yeah, I do have an. Well, they gave me a tablet. Yeah, but yeah, it works as a phone. Yeah, yeah. Thank you.